Hey everyone, I'm Double Archangel, welcome to my channel. This is the second episode of my tutorial series. In this episode, we're gonna go through overlays. But before we do that, I'm gonna time lapse through the actual artwork that we are making of Alejandra Jones. I don't know if I butchered that name, but it's the female version of Ghost Rider. So, why did I choose this one? Well, first of all, overlays, they are super duper tools for us artists. They are like, I at least love them because they make things so much more easy and more eye appealing. Anyway, when we get to a point where an overlay is good to use, I will stop the time lapse. We will go through in more precise principles how to use them, why I used it, what they are, and so on and so forth. When we come to the end of the actual artwork, there will be more in detail information about the actual overlay. Okay, so if you like my kind of art and my kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Give a thumbs up for this video and subscribe for weekly content to support this channel. Also, remember to share the videos with others, with family, with friends, whoever, so that I can keep doing this and get more content coming for you guys. Because I love doing this, but I love doing it for you guys. And stay tuned for the RSP series also. I will release that later probably next month anyway let's begin with the tutorial So guys, welcome to my second tutorial and um, I have to say a disclaimer right in the beginning so uh, I will be doing this whole tutorial as a voiceover because well I forgot to unmute my mic after a phone call that I had when I was recording the second day of this video so I recorded this basically two days. It took me about six hours to make this uh, artwork and uh, we will now go through this uh, in a time lapse in the beginning when I make it and I'll get back to you guys right when we start making these overlays that this tutorial is about. Okay, so now we start with the first uh, kind of overlay and that's the haze overlay and uh, I'm picking here from many variants of uh, these. It's basically a light leak in a picture that you add to the to your artwork to bring more depth to the actual artwork we got without using any kind of blurring techniques so this gives a depth of field with the help of the overlay and uh, and these I use often uh, with the actual overlay layer layer uh, option So we see here how you basically go through all the layer options and see if which one fits best your purpose in the picture. So I chose overlay. So when you use overlays you often want to bring some kind of effect to the picture and uh, next I am making a lightning scene in the background and I, I use so-called alpha channel overlays. That means that they are on a black background and uh, they blend into the picture with the help of layer options such as uh, 
lighting, screen, color dodge, li linear dodge, and uh, lighter color of them. Uh, of course, you can try using overlay options and soft light and so on also, uh, by all means, but uh, they are mostly meant to bring an element that is exposured with a high exposure to the picture. And next up we use uh, overlay that I call uh, so-called fire abstract fire shape and uh, both one that is using alpha channel and one that is a simple JPEG that you uh, rather mask out and mask in back again. Same as the haze layer. Here we have a haunt version of uh, overlay and uh, in this particular example I am warping the overlay to be just exact the form and uh, figure that I want it to be so that it so that it works with the overall composition. I like these overlays that are a bigger picture more than the alpha overlays actually because uh, well you have so much freedom in what how you what you can make from them because of the warping option. Uh, I find that uh, all these kind of magic overlays that are energy and such uh, are in a good way makes the piece unique by warping them and I mean because they aren't real things it doesn't matter how you warp them pretty much always looks great. So to get an even more smooth blend, I decided that I'm gonna use blend if in the above layer so that it uh, becomes more or less transparent actually in this picture. Because I wanted to feel that it's some kind of souls that are trying to escape or something. So next we have the abstract overlay and this one I am gonna use as uh, addition to the soles that I just made and uh, basically you just put this one above the picture wherever you want it to be. Uh, I decided that it's gonna be behind my subject layer and then you try out what layer option is the best that fits you and after this I would recommend that you mask it out and then bring it back with the white brush like I teached in my first tutorial. Uh, when I'm done with the layer styles and satisfied with this I will also blend if it a little to make it even more blending into the picture and after that I will use a hue and saturation layer that will colorize to uh, a green color so that it matches with the rest of the souls. the abstract color overlay with uh, an abstract fire overlay on an alpha channel and this one is really good to warp to a desired shape 
uh, in the picture. So for example here I am warping it so it will fit the back tire or the rim actually of this Ghost Rider lady's motorcycle. So I'm following by hiding all the foreground layers and uh, only having the background and we're gonna add a so-called fog overlay. Uh, and fog overlays are also alpha channels but I all usually use them as a little extra haze and bringing more depth to the picture. So this one I will first warp in a desired shape and after this I will use the layer options, blend if and bring down the opac opacity of it so that it doesn't uh, show too much but that you still can see it. And uh, for my particular uh, example I'm bringing it down to the level of the road so that it's like some moisture and uh, masking it away totally first with a uh, full, fully black mask and then bringing, bringing back on some areas with a white brush. Here I am adding an uh, overlay in the foreground. This is some kind of spooky souls trap kind. And uh, this one also works in the same way, just masking it off and then bringing it back with the white brush. I will also use a hue and saturation layer to uh, change the color from gray and white to a more greenish one so it fits with the theme. These overlays are from Envato Elements. So next up we have an interesting one and this is a smoke overlay. And uh, there's two kind of smoke overlays that I know are in two main categories. One that is made from friction and the other one that is made from heat. Uh, friction one contains more of a grudgy feel to it and it can even have some purple in it like in the color so uh, the layer style that you use with smoke depends all about all of the actual picture that it is in so this one I can't give a tip more than using layer styles and then mask it out and and bring it back again. So the last overlay I'm going to talk about in this tutorial is a little different and it's the dust uh, overlay. These are alpha channels also, but uh, they are best used, I think, in the foreground always and in quite small uh, proportions. So you make it pretty small from its original state and then you mask it out and bring them back uh, wherever light sources for example hits the picture so you you see dust particles in air all the time around us right uh, and these are trying to replicate that uh, but you don't see them normally you only see them when light is hitting light for example uh, sunlight comes in through a window you 
you see those small particles. You know, that's that's what we try to replicate with these overlays. Uh, the same thing goes for star overlays, but those, of course, you use in the background. And uh, with stars, always keep in mind they are always behind a cloud. They are never in front of a cloud, right? Because the cloud is always closer to us. So, so the last overlay that I'm gonna mention is the so-called lens flare overlay and this one is also one that is used in the end when you make uh, artwork it is based on when you take a picture with a camera and either use a flash or there's a strong sunlight or whatever else uh, other kind of light in in the background or surrounding area and uh, it generates this kind of flare thing that is mostly meant to just look good. Same goes with bokeh. It basically means a blurry part of uh, a light source that you can see in the picture and the blur is dependent on the shape of the shutter of the camera. Anyway, even though I realized myself also that this is pretty much me counting up my overlays, I still hope that you learned something uh, about them, why we use them, and uh, like I always been saying, they make art so much easier to make and looks a lot better in photo manipulation. Anyway, I'm Double Archangel, I thank you for watching this tutorial and I'll catch you in the next one.